Hi YouTubers, today I'm going to be walking you through The Quakes USA. Really fantastic tune, Paul Roman's a great guitar player. Haven't listened to a lot of The Quakes bits and pieces over the years, but I'm really starting to appreciate them now, especially having had this tune brought to my attention, listening through, going, yep, that's pretty cool, sitting down, working on it, and seeing just how clever Paul Roman really is. Uh, just some things to note in terms of the guitar tone. I usually save tone tutorials and stuff like that for my Patreons. So if you do want to become a member of the Patreon, you will find exclusive videos on that for particular tunes. Uh, for this one, I'm actually going to give you guys a few tips, but even better, if you happen to have got yourself one of the Positive Grid Spark amps, which it's not an affiliate, I'm not sponsored by them or anything, I just happen to, uh, actually a Patreon member sent me one quite different, neither of those things, not affiliated or a sponsorship, um, but it is really cool. It's a really fantastic thing, and I've dialed up a tone that really matches that guitar tone from the recording. So you'll see in the link below uh, in the description uh, that you can actually download that tone if you happen to have one of those, but the good news is, I thought, to be fair, if you don't have one of those, all you really need, a good clean amp, an overdrive pedal, I know it sounds funny when I put it that way, but you, you kind of need the overdrive pedal, I think, for the effect that uh, you hear because to me, it sounds like an overdrive pedal in an amp, not an overdriven amp, if that makes sense. Um, and any delay pedal will do, you know, any any delay pedal that you can just bring that delay back nice and tight to give a, a just a slightly thicker tone. It's not a not really a big slap back or anything like that. That's all I've really done using the Spark amp to achieve that tone. So, uh, and I've also bought the treble up a fair bit in the mids. There's a little bit of that punch in there. So keep that in mind and, and have a crack at dialing that in. Now, um, just quickly, I have to thank my latest Patreon members, Edgar Latore, Chad Bain, and Nick Wallen. Nick Wallen actually joined the top tier for a whole year. He's just paid up front for the whole year. Guys, I just appreciate it so much. The, the Patreon has over 100 members now. Um, and also, if you don't want to join the Patreon, if it's not your cup of tea, you see what I did there? I didn't plan that, I swear. Um, grab yourself a mug, okay, or something, or a hoodie, or something like that. If you do like my channel and you do enjoy coming here to learn, just think of it as a way to represent, and uh, I'll really appreciate it. And I won't send, I will not send uh, Billy the Unpleasant Pheasant around to uh, ask for some kind of contribution. I won't do that. I wasn't going to anyway, but anyway, um, enough of the bad humor. Let's start. So the intro of the song, um, remember to check out the cover. Okay, I will put the link in the description. Check out my cover. You can see me play the whole thing, and I think that's going to help. Have it there, and then have this lesson up, bounce between them. You won't even necessarily need the transcription that you can get on the Patreon, okay? You won't necessarily need that. Good to have, don't need it. I try to do my lessons like that. So, um, from the very beginning, we put our first finger on the second fret of the third string, and we hit the fourth string and the third string together. And we do this six times. On the seventh time, we sort of hit it seven times, but on the seventh time, we bounce up into the fifth string, upwards and we play the third fret there just like that okay the other thing I want to mention is if you can hold the second fret of the third string and the second fret of the second string hold them together and then every now and then if you happen to be a little bit clumsy you'll bump that second string and that's exact I'm not saying Paul Roman was being clumsy but that's exactly the effect that is kind of going on there in the intro Every now and then, you get that extra note, so. Now, to make this just a little bit more interesting, if you want to add a little more detail, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and then we flick up on the fifth string, muted. And my second finger, it just relaxes a little bit. You can hit all the strings if you want, it doesn't matter as long as you mute them, so. Like that and straight back into it that's it actually ends up being straight down back into the riff so and it's these little nuances that make Paul Rome's guitar playing really fantastic okay and uh, but you know you don't have to play exactly like that you can get a rough idea of what's happening and even if you're not capable of playing the speed of this song you're going to get some great ideas out of the chords and the licks. So just learn the learn the parts and then use it for your own stuff. Um, yeah, that's my advice. Have fun with it. So that takes us through uh, 
the a long sort of part of the intro, and then the next part after we play for the last time. Okay, we go seven, six, five. A little muted tone as we move to a B flat chord. Into a C chord. Then we go into these crazy licks. But let me just show you the strum pattern there. So as we do seven, six, five, dead strike, up, up, down, down, up, move up to a C, up, up, down, down, up, then up on a D chord. So when I call these B flat, C, D, okay, I'm playing a B flat major chord. First fret, third fret, third fret, third fret. From the fifth string down, respectively, respectfully, respectively, respectfully, and respectively. One, three, three, three. Okay, if you're strong enough, use your pinky. That's fine. If you can't, play it like an A chord. Stretch back to that first fret, and that will help. Okay? Um, alternatively, you could just sort of get away with a B flat five power chord. C open chord, but try to get the rhythm right. And then you could play the D there as well. So you could use an open C and a D, but try to get those upstrokes at the beginning. So we go up, up, down, down, up, flick, the dead strike, relax your fingers, up, up, down, down, up, up. Okay, and then the only problem with that is you would need to jump up here and that's challenging so you could just play them all as power chords. Sorry if you are a bit more advanced, you're probably getting impatient right now, but I'll just show you one last time one other option. You could just use power chords. And that's nice and easy. So I've shown you exactly how it was played in my opinion and two alterations. So from there, the next lick, oh the first lick I should say goes like this. We come off the chord. Then we go um, down on the 10, pull up to the 7, right, or pull off, play a 9, pull off to the 7, play a 9 on the 4th string, up on the 7th fret, play the 10 again, pull off to the 7, play the 9, and then flick the string, sorry, it should have been flicked upwards, then play a 9 again, 7. So that sounds like this. Play it really slow. Flick. There you go. Then we're back into the chords. We, we do the chords exactly the same way. Or you don't necessarily have to worry about the little flick beforehand because you might not have time. Just get to that B flat chord with an up strike. Up, down, down, up. Up, up, down, down on the C. Then we finish on the D on the up strike, then we get this lick. So that happens to be the ninth fret on the fourth string, tenth fret on the third string, and we go down, up, flick up and relax your fingers so you with on the left hand so you're killing the string. Come down again, down, up, flick again, or muted strum, down, up, and then seven and seven. This, so let me just talk about the little licks that we've seen so far. So we saw the, the 7, 6, 5. That's out of a blue scale. D blue scale. Oh, hang on. Which I have to learn, apparently. It's a bit of an awkward angle from this point, though. Okay, that's a root, what we would call a root 5 D minor blue scale. You could also play it here, which would be more familiar. Okay, so it's not completely out of nowhere. That's a bluesy type lick that's quite common. Um, use your ear. If you if you hear that, okay, you're hearing, if you hear that repeatedly, see if you can work out when you want to use it and see if you can figure out how that goes. Check out my video on the Psychobilly scale. That will also really help. I talk about the blue scale and I think I've got some videos on the blue scale as well. I've got a few videos now. There's probably about 350. So there should be something in there. <laughs> um, anyway, moving right along. We've just come off the... 
So by the way, if you have the transcription, very hard to read the little numbers on, on the program, but uh, this is, we're now moving into bar 18. So we're back to the strumming. <laughs> Um, I didn't mention the 9 and 10 lick. This is actually very clever because normally that lick happens up, up here, for example. And that's a really common lick. And we see it in a basic pentatonic shape up the top, but we're grabbing that second string, you know, and, and pinky on that kind of angle. So pentatonic scale, that's really common, but it very rarely... Okay, very rarely do I see the 9 and 10 or, or that idea displaced on the neck of the guitar. So that's actually very clever. I would say that Paul Roman has one of those notes, but maybe not as high up. He, he And also, he couldn't do them down here. Um, well, you can, but you've got to do them as a B and an F like this. And you just don't have the same control. You can't sort of ring those notes, uh, ring the neck of those notes. You can hear him just pulling down on him slightly. So very clever. He, um, I think he, you know, used the geography of the fretboard to his advantage. Okay. Um, so now we're moving on to the next lick. Then. So what's actually happening here? Uh, this is really important. One, uh, one, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, four. You have to play that last chord a little early to give you time to get to this. One, two, three, four. My advice there is is have a listen a couple times till it sounds familiar. In fact, you might have to listen to it a whole bunch of times. I had to listen to it heaps to get it in my head that it finished there. Um, in the end, because it was doing my head in a little bit, I just sort of counted that bar. One, two, three, four. Okay, um, but I'll play it really slow so you can build it up. One, two, three, four. Okay, and the lick from the tenth fret, ten, nine, seven, and then nine on the fourth string, okay? Seven, ten, nine, seven, nine, seven. And then seven and seven on the third and second. Okay, so that's the lick. Really cool, very clever. I've never seen that lick played sort of on the on those middle two strings like that. It's a little bit different. Okay, and especially within respect to where that sits against the root note. Very clever. The guy's thought about it. Uh wonder if he can weigh in and let me know. Maybe I'm playing it wrong or playing it in the wrong spot. Who knows? I'm pretty confident it's at least close. Um okay, so this is the last time now we play those chords at this point. And then we move on to the next part of the intro. Okay, so it's kind of a really long intro. And the good news is once you've learnt these parts to the song, you've learnt most of the song. So it might you might be thinking, oh, we're just still stuck in the intro. You're learning the whole song just about in this intro. So he goes to this chord now. Very similar to the intro, but now he mixes up that bass note. So we're going... And remember to flatten right across the second string and first string, or the second string in particular. The first time, it's exactly the same as the intro, but we actually play the third fret on the fourth string. We bounce up into that. So, three, four, one, two. Mute, and start again. So, every second time, you play it just like the original intro. So, it ends up being. And then, what happens after that? After this, uh, we're still not at the verse yet, still part of the intro. You let it ring, okay, just the zero on the two. And then, to get the real Paul Roman sound, you've got to do these little muted notes here. So. We come off that one, two, three, four, one, two, three, 
and four and yeah, sorry. And actually we want to finish it up with it down. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So what's happening there is we, we hit the zero on the two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, up, down, up, down, two, three, four, one, two, three, up, down. Hopefully that makes sense. You sort of got to get that. Four, one, two, three. So practice this little exercise because this is challenging. These rhythm things are really difficult. I mean, I, I hope people aren't finding this just too slow pace. It's just that it's challenging, and I know that it's challenging because I had to work it out. So we're going to go um, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Okay, so if you're having trouble with that, go back, play along with that a couple of times. Try and see if you can catch those little uh, hang on yeah, those things they're not easy okay um, and the actual chord was 0 and 2 0, 2 and 3 if you want to fatten it out the second time and then the third time you need the 3 and the 5 okay the very last time is not too bad you just hit the open 4th string um, I like to be a bit sneaky and run the left hand over here like that it's kind of cool and fun um, and it looks cool because you're crossing hands. I remember seeing Necroman. I saw the Horror Pops in Melbourne when I was 17, back in the days when you could get into these things. And I remember seeing, you know, Necroman at the very beginning of a Horror Pops set. That was really cool. Very cool moment, actually. So, where are we? What are we doing, guys? Where are we at? So, okay. We're just about to get into the verse now. So, after you hit the zero, do the whammy thing. We do this. Now we're using a D minor chord, but I, I swear before he was playing the major chord in there or just hitting that extra note. This is cool stuff. I like that sort of thing, you know. Um, I've done, like, I understand music theory. You guys know that. You can watch my breakdowns on that stuff. It doesn't mean I don't love this stuff that kind of is doesn't necessarily make sense because it sounds cool. So it's just cool. Why not know both and also forget theory sometimes? Um, so what we do here, so we've hit this one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one. Again, rhythmically not easy, so I'm going to just play it for you. Three, four, one, two, three. Two, three, four, one, two, three. It's a little bit like the rock around the clock rhythm. Da -da. So try to feel that, um, and at really high speed, it almost becomes easier because you're just going to feel it because it's so quick. Um, but if you are having trouble, just break it down. One, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, four, one, and so on and so forth. That's the whole verse, guys. That goes right through. It's just a D minor chord, so I should show you the chord first. So it's fourth, so we start sliding in from a C sharp minor, fourth fret, sixth fret, sixth fret, fifth fret, and if you want fourth fret on the first string by barring that finger across, flick it upwards, slide up into the D minor. So exactly the same chord, we just shift it up. I'm not going to, I guess I probably don't need to walk you through the frets for D minor, just move the C sharp minor up. And remember that chord, write it down, draw a picture. Whatever you got to do. From here, there's a little build up into the chorus where he just strums that consistently. Okay, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. It's, again, it's that the details that counts, that little end part. Down, 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 up. Relax your fingers, down, up. So I'm just relaxing the whole hand. Killing the strings, then coming up. Alright, so this is the chorus. Now, the good news is, 
Remember the chords that we did at the start of the intro. Do you remember the B flat and the C? Okay, that, exactly the same. That's the chorus. This is what I was trying to say. You've already learnt more of the song than you realise. You've just about learnt everything except the guitar solo. So give yourself a pat on the back. So we come off that. We do a little dead strike after the C chord, just like before. And then up. And then the next time we come down, the second finger drops down onto that third fret. So we end up going. And, uh, so that's on the end. At one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. And we start again. Okay, so that's the chorus. What happens after the chorus? We return back to the verse and we use this chord. So we come off the... Go back to the minor chord. So there's your D minor. But there's a little space between the verses too where he uses that chord, does a very similar thing to what he did between the intro and the first verse where he lets it ring out, so you go. And then you hit that fourth string. And then the verse kicks back in, okay? So let's think of that as like a little interlude. Everything now repeats. Everything repeats. We go through the verse again. We go through the chorus. And when we finish that chorus, we get this. So... That's the D minor we finished last time, but this time we go. Now, not too difficult, but again, getting the timing of the upstroke coming in is challenging. If you want to nail that, you're going to have to practice something like this. So, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two. So that's what it is, guys. That's the part you want to loop a couple of times and try and see if you can catch. I'll do it a little quicker. Okay? You can just do it as a D5 power chord as well. Whatever. It either is going to sound great. Oh, I would use the minor chord. Okay, so that's everything up to the guitar solo. I will release the guitar solo. So keep your eye out for the solo one. It won't be too far down the track. Uh, and see how you go. Drop a comment, as they say. I don't know why they say drop it, but place a comment in the comments. Uh, let me know what you think. Give me some feedback. Make sure you hit like. Make sure you hit the bell. And make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next one.